Alright guys, welcome to this page of the notes and what we're going to do now is we're going to take a look at um, uh, another technique you may need to use to help you simplify nth roots or radical expressions and it has to do with the quotient property. So here's what's going to happen. In some cases you're going to be taking the nth root of a fraction, right? So right here I'm taking the nth root of a divided by b. Well, we know the quotient property, right? The quotient property of radicals says all you need to do, right, is just simply take the nth root of the top and the nth root of the bottom. But that list of four things at the beginning of the set of notes that I said you need to do in order to simplify an expression, well, number four was you can't have a radical in the denominator, right? No radicals in the basement. So, this nth root of b in the bottom is no bueno. That's not okay. In order to simplify this guy, I got to get him out of the denominator, bring him upstairs. All right, no hiding radicals in the basement. Everybody's got to be upstairs. So, um, how do we how do we go about doing that? Well, the way that we're going to do that is a technique, a process known as rationalizing the denominator. It's going to help us get that radical out of the denominator. Bring that radical out of the basement. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look at how this is going to work uh, and then we'll try a couple of example problems. And really, here's what you guys are going to need to be able to do. Uh, uh, this is all really good stuff but it's kind of a technical book definition and I don't want it to confuse you. Just take a look at the table. All right. Here's what you're going to need to do. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to look at the problem that you've been given and you need to immediately, immediately check the index. All right? What is the index? If the index is a 2, meaning it's not written, right? The index isn't written, right? Because a 2 is implied. So if all you have is the square root of something in the denominator, it's very, very simple. We're simply going to multiply numerator and denominator by whatever that square root is in the bottom. Let me show you real quick. It's easy, easy, easy. Let me show you. If you have 1 over the square root of a, right? this is the problem that you've been given. 1 over the square root of a. I immediately check to see what's my index. Oh, my index is a 2. Perfect. All I need to do is multiply top and bottom by whatever this guy is. So I'm going to have 1 over the square root of a multiplied by square root of a over the square root of a. That's it. That's all you have to do, right? So immediately check the index. If the index is a 2 or there is no index because 2 is implied, you just have a square root down here. Easy peasy, you're going to take what you were given and multiply top and bottom by whatever that guy is. Whatever it is, multiply top and bottom by it. Why? Well, here's why. I'm going to multiply these guys, right? Right. This is multiplication, right? So I multiply the numerators, 1 times the square root of a, and that's the square root of a, over. Well, I have the square root of a times the square root of a. Square root of a times the square root of a, right? I have something times itself. Well, how does that work? That's easy. What if you had 1 over x times 1 over x? Well, if you had a 1 over x times 1 over x, you guys know that's 1 over x squared. This works the exact same way. Square root of a times the square root of a is a square root of a squared. Right? There's two of them, two of them. You're multiplying them together. Square root of a times the square root of a is square root of a squared. But the index and the power are the same. Boom. That means they cancel out. I have the square root of a over a. And what you have successfully done is you have removed the radical, right? This radical is now no longer in the denominator. It's been moved to the numerator. I don't have a radical hiding in my basement anymore. I brought all the radicals upstairs. 
uh, and, and we're good, right? I'm, the radical police won't come and take me away. So I've removed the radical from the denominator and everybody's happy. Now, again, if you go and you check your problem, the problem that you've been given, and instead of having a square root, you have some other root, uh, a third root, a fourth root, a fifth root. There's some index here other than a two. Okay, no problem. It's actually not that much. It's slightly trickier, but it still is not bad. Here's what you're going to do. Let me show you a quick example. Again, it's not too terribly hard. If I have one over, right, and let's do the cubed root of a b, right? So I have one over the cubed root of b. So I take a look at the problem I've been given and I go, oh, hold up a second, my index is a three. Okay, so what you're gonna do is you're going to multiply the numerator and the denominator, that just simply means multiply top and bottom, multiply top and bottom, by the exact same radical, right? Whatever this radical is, you're gonna multiply top and bottom by the same radical, please notice that the ends are the same, Right, so since I have a cubed root, I'm going to multiply top and bottom by a cubed root. But the radicand, right, what's underneath the radical, I'm going to multiply that radicand as n minus x. n is the index, x is the power. It's very simple. Here we go. I have 1 over the cubed root of b. I'm going to multiply top and bottom, sorry, I lost my multiplication symbol, there we go. Multiply top and bottom by, now again, look, it says exact same root, same root. Since I have a cubed root, multiply top and bottom by a cubed root. Okay, great. But the index needs to be whatever I have just raised to the n minus x power. All right, here we go. My index, my n, is a 3. My power is a 1. Well, 3 minus 1 is what I would have to do. 3 minus 1 is a 2. So that means my radicand is going to be a b to the second power. b squared, b squared b squared and b squared, right? So if the index is something other than a 2, you'll multiply top and bottom by the exact same radical, all right? The same degree radical. But your radicand, you're going to have to change the power of the radicand, and you change it to the index minus whatever the original power was. My index is 3, my power is a 1. So I'm going to put my b to the 3 minus 1, which is the second power. b to the second, b to the second. We'll take a look at a couple of other example problems on the next page. As you get a little bit more practice with it, you'll get used to it. But here's what happens. Again, we multiply, right? We're multiplying. 1 times the cubed root of a b squared. Well, that's going to be a cubed root of a b squared. You ready for this? You ready for this? Check this out. Here's what happens. Okay, cubed root of b, cubed root b squared. Remember, on the previous page, when we were simplifying, I said, anytime you have something and they're both under the same radical, right? A square root and a square root, a cubed root and a cubed root, a fourth root and a fourth root. We put those two things together under the same radical. Cubed root, cubed root. I'm going to put these guys together, a b to the first and a b to the second. So I have a cubed root of a b times b squared. Oh, oh, do you see where this is going? Like bases, b to the first, b squared. What do you do with the exponents when the bases are the same? You add them. And when you add them, 1 plus 2 is a 3. What's my index? It's a 3. That means they cancel. Are you kidding me? I am not kidding you. Math is awesome. Look at you with your super math powers. So 3 
and then we have a b to the third the power and the index are the same they cancel each other out i apologize i had to squeeze let me write my final answer down here i have the cubed root of b squared in the top all over well what's left the index and the power cancel each other out you're left with a b in the denominator and once again you have removed the radical from the basement. You've brought that radical upstairs. The radical police aren't going to come take you away because you're hiding radicals in your basement without a permit. Don't do that. Um, and I, I've rationalized the denominator. So here's what we're going to do. I, I recognize it's, it's fairly complicated the first time through. Hopefully I helped it make a little bit of sense. Head on over to the next page of the notes. We'll look at several more example problems where we'll have to do this a couple more times. Hopefully you'll kind of grasp it as we go through a few more problems. So I'll meet you guys on the next page.